Hello, it's me, Andy Ripley, and I'm here to talk to you about creeps come out at night. Specifically, the research I've been doing. Um, you've seen our first episode by now. You know how unsuccessful we were in finding any ghosts. So I decided to check out this book by none other than Zach Bagans of Ghost Adventures. Ghost hunting for dummies. I mean, I think we're a little smarter than dummies. Also, that's an ableist word, but you know. Anyway, so I have never read anything from this uh, series of books before. And first off, I have to say, we could really use a copy editor on this. I'm sure the content that Mr. Bagans wrote was perfect. But there are definitely some misspellings that would have been easily caught if someone like myself had read through it before it went to print. Second up, and this is my favorite, we've got a picture here. If you squint real close, you can kind of see a house there. But really, it just looks like a black square. And I kind of feel like maybe somebody should have lightened that up a little bit. We could have called Irving West there on that. Overall, um, it doesn't seem like this book was written to be read cover to cover because it, when you do that, there's a lot of repetitive material. I think the author and the editors assumed you would just read the, the chapters that seem the most interesting to you instead of the whole thing. Pretty much every chapter talks about spiritualism which if you're not familiar with it, it was the trend right around the end of the Civil War or during it, and then came back after World War II um, of trying to speak to the dead because of the massive loss of life. I already knew as much as I needed to know and cared to know about spiritualism. There are only so many times I wanna hear about the Fox sisters. So I'd say about a fourth of this book was for me not helpful. But there's definitely some good stuff in here about how to build a ghost hunting kit, the kinds of things you should bring, as well as considerations I hadn't thought about, like, you know, going into an old house, there might be black mold. Uh, I am from New Orleans. I lived there before and after Katrina. So I'm familiar with the health effects of black mold and that is something I probably should have thought about. Also things like, you know, maybe you should go somewhere when it's not dark so you don't accidentally fall in a hole and hurt yourself. So definitely some good stuff to consider as far as that goes. There was also some really interesting stuff about water and humidity that I'm not entirely sure I have my mind wrapped around. Um, the idea seems to be that water has memory, which I, I'm not against that idea, but that water within buildings and building materials, because everything does contain some amount of water, can retain the memories of ghosts and that's residual hauntings not like full apparitions and stuff like that um so he recommends you bring a humidity monitor with you and if it like suddenly spikes that means there might be ghosts i i still i don't quite get it because um again from new orleans 100 percent humidity all the time um it is the most haunted city in the united states so you know maybe that that is related. Um, I just, I don't think that it's always the same water in the air, but I'm not an atmospheric scientist, you know? Um, he does talk about storms and why storms might cause more ghosts to appear because they do feed on electricity, such as electromagnetic or electromagnetic electricity, whatever it is, you know, lightning right? <laughs> so, okay. All right. He does not talk about why nighttime is the best time for ghosts. He does suggest, though, that hauntings can occur during the day. So, I'm not completely off when I 
question the idea that maybe, you know, maybe we don't always have to be out at night. I like to go to bed early, so. Um, anyway, otherwise, I think this is a pretty good book. There's also some good suggestions for why maybe wrestling venues tend to be haunted. Because pretty much all the dedicated ones I've worked in, people say are haunted. He talks about theater and how both actors and audience get so invested that maybe that's why they kind of stick around after they die. And man, I have never seen anyone get more invested than at a wrestling show, especially if someone, a heel, has really upset them. Plus, we are putting our bodies on the line and our life on the line by wrestling. So, you know, maybe that that is a thing and maybe creeps should continue to look into haunted wrestling venues. Um, so yeah, that's my general review. I definitely, everything I read, I have a lot more thoughts on than I can ever possibly say. So if you've read this and want to talk about it, let me know. Um, I wouldn't not recommend it, but I wouldn't highly recommend this book. I also don't have anything to compare it to. So, you know, maybe this is actually the guide to hunting ghosts. Um, as I continue to read, I'll continue to update you to let you know. All right. Thanks. Bye.